All right, I have with us again Dr. Golan Broshi, and you guys are going to be so excited because today we talk about the rapture. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Before you guys freak out, because I know that's like such an exciting topic for some of me. Um, maybe not the rapture you're thinking of. This rapture is different. This rapture is a calling. A calling to rapture. So what what, what does that even mean? Go on. Yes. Uh, let's get started. So we're talking about the calling that God always, in the Old Testament and in the New, had on every believer, on every person that trusts him. A calling for a rapture from this world, a, rap- mm. a, 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 a revenance, a, a separation, a, a call for holiness. Holiness in, in Hebrew means to be separated to God. So a calling to go after God, not to be like this world, but to follow Him, leave everything behind. Merriam-Webster has the definition of rapture. It's a state or experience of being carried away by overwhelming emotion. That's one of them. Another one, expression of manifestation of ecstasy and passion. Another one, they talk about, uh, uh, another definition is a, a mystical experience when the spirit is exalted to the knowledge of divine things. Uh, well, you know, we don't think about these definitions much. Most of the time, if any believer ever hears rapture, we think about the return of Yeshua, how he comes and he takes us back with him to be with him forever. That's usually what we have the connotation, but the word itself actually has a different meaning. And so we're actually going more into the real meaning of rapture here today. Yeah. Again, we're talking about the calling of God for holiness from, from his followers, from his, from the believers. Right. Calling. So it's, it's God calling and the initiative is on, is on us to follow Mm. him, to, to leave everything behind and follow him. And we'll go over some scriptures and we'll talk about them. And you can read the first one from Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So here, here we have the first hint that the will of God is in opposition to this world, to the what they call in, in, in German the Zeitgeist, the spirit of this world. Mm. The spirit of this world is with is in entity, is with it, opposition to God. Yeah. Entity and um, uh, opposition. Yeah. So w- here again we have a hint that if we wanna if we wanna do the will of God, we have to separate ourselves in holiness from the spirit of this world to conform our minds. Right. But please, if you can, if we'll, we'll go to the first example of this calling, at least in the Old Testament, and if you can read in Hebrews 11, 8 to 10, and we'll see how this calling is defined by God himself when he called Abram. By faith, Abram obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So Abram heard by faith and went out. And we can read about it. Of course, the backdrop is is, is uh, Genesis 12 1 you can just read genesis 12 1 so we'll see the uh, the, the background of, of of hebrews genesis 12 1 mm-hmm. now the lord had said to abram get out of your country from your family and i will show you your father's house to a land i will show you you know you know what this reminds me of in passover isn't that we we say this uh my my father was a syrian ready to exactly. perish he was a Syrian ready to perish. And even just thinking of how, how disconnected Assyria, Assyria is, like the enemy of God. And, you know, it's like he, he brings that narrative brings you back to this moment. But what you read in in in, in Genesis twelve, this is this hmm. is the this is the, the calling. This is a, con- a concentrated example of the calling of God, a separation of everything that we know. Yeah, we have to deny ourselves, and Abraham is called to deny what? To, 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 to leave what? To forsake what? His home, his country, his, his family. Home, his family, and go to the land that I, what does it say in the end of the verse? To land I will show I you. I will show you. So mm-hmm. he's living without a map, without a blueprint, without GPS. Like, okay, you want me to go there? I'll go there. No, to the mm-hmm. land that I will show you. But first, what you have to do? You have to step out. Wow. You have to leave. 
God calls you, you have to go. Wait, wait, God, where do you want me to go? It's, hey, hey, I just called you out. Go out. You know, it's the same thing with the manna. You know, remember the mm. manna from heaven that he gave Israel? Mm -hmm. Did he give them the, everything they need to? They, they had to, for 40 years, did he give them in one day? Or no. what? Every day, Every right? Morning. Every morning they had to uh, wake up in faith. And he told them, don't take for the, for the next day. Don't take for the next day. Every day, take in faith and I'll give you, uh, the next day I'll give you fresh. So Abraham, again, the calling is to leave everything to the land that I will show you. Yeah. After you leave, I will show you day by day if you walk in faith. But this is the calling of God to leave everything. And if you, um, if you jump to the New Testament, just, to, uh, if, you, you know, it's, we're saying it's the same calling, calling of God to leave everything behind. And we have an example in Mark, uh, can you read Mark 1, 16 to 17? We, we hear of two brothers. And as Yeshua, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then Yeshua said to them, follow me and I'll make you become fishers of men. Then they immediately left their nets and followed him. Exactly. So they left everything, everything they had invested in this world, all the nets. Yes. And, and even further, it wasn't just them. And when he had gone a little further from there, he saw James, the son of Zebedee and John, his brother, who were also mending their nets. And immediately he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat. Their father. Like in a a Abram, your yeah. father's house, so leave. Whatever nets, whatever security, whatever investment you have in this world, if, if, if God is calling you, he has something better for you. Hmm. Of course, the Messiah. What's, what's better than going after the Messiah? But leave everything, everything you got invested. Yeah. And, you know, when I think about it, it's like it, it reminds me of how Abraham knew the struggle and he knew the temptation to go back. And why did he send exactly. his servant to get Rebecca, to get Isaac's bride? He said, don't send my son. Don't let him go there. Just send my servant. You know, uh, he sent his servant to go, f you know, bring Rebecca back. Exactly. In faith, he knew that God would, would be faithful and provide. He knew that if he, would, if he would go back, he would be tempted. And you know the what we read in Hebrews. If you go, if you go back to Hebrews eleven, Hebrews eleven, I think it's verse uh, verse nine. Even when he got to the promised land, Hebrews eleven. If you read verse nine, what does it say? Yeah, starting verse eight. By faith Abram obeyed yeah. when he was called to go out of the place which he would receive as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelt in the land of promise, as in a foreign country. This is incredible. He, he, even though he got to the promised land, it's as if he never got there really. Even mm. in the promised land, he lived like a foreigner. Why? Why it says on the next verse, why? He, he said to be intense, yeah? For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Exactly. He knew the calling of God wasn't over. It's not over. And it's, 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 it's for the rest of your life. Mm. You, you're never there. You're never there, right. and uh, be, because the calling is, is the, the, it's it's not a one, it's not a single event. No, okay, I'll, I'll 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 go I'll go this minute, and that's it. You go for the rest. Mm. And even if even when he got to the promised land, it says he lived there like a foreigner because he waited for a better a better city, the right. new Jerusalem that would come from heaven, and not even just the city of Jerusalem to be built like in David's time. We're talking about he waited for God's foundation. And, and now, and now, in Hebrews thirteen, in Hebrews chapter thirteen, if you can read verses thirteen and fourteen, look, the, this calling, the 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 the, 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 um, the writer of Hebrews saying, this calling is upon our life also. Yeah. Let us also what? Therefore, let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. And look, we we live in Israel. We live in the promised land and some of our, some of our brothers and sisters are living in Jerusalem. But yet, we're called to live, to, to, to go after Yeshua hmm. outside of the camp. And of course, we know that in Israel, if you follow Yeshua, you would be, you would be thrown outside the camp. Outside the camp. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a matter of if, you yeah. know, you're going to be thrown. Yeah. We, we know it on our flesh. But waiting like Abram, waiting for what? 
if you can read 14. For, we, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. Exactly. So we're still living that calling mm -hmm. to, to, to go out and wait for the city uh, to come. It really reminds me of so many of the people who contact us that we've reached through online media. Many people, especially that are coming out of the Orthodox communities, because they come to faith and they have to forsake everything. Exactly. They can't be followers of Yeshua and stay with their families. They can't, you know, they can't stay in their community. In fact, uh, they're kicked out forcibly. And so it's such a dilemma. It's not just easy. I, I guess, you know, we kind of take that for granted in so many cultures, you know, like, and they have to bear that for yeah. the rest of their lives because it's not like their family with, okay, you, you can come back now. Right. We're sorry. No, yeah. they have they they literally have to wait for a city or for a new city that would come from heaven. There's a good friend of mine, and I mean, she was uh, when she came to faith, a or Orthodox Moroccan family, and wow. mean, it was kind of a very kind of a violent, harrowing situation. And but then when she uh, finally her family, it's like she's had children now, and she's like raised them up, and even still, it's like she'll get to visit them some. But there's a wall between them. They it's like they're wow. so it, it's tough. It's a continual cross to bear. It's a continual struggle. She, she's yeah, and she, she's always, out, she's always going to be a foreigner in her own land, in yeah. her own yeah. you know yeah yeah. And, and and again, if you if you can go to James, of course Jacob, yeah James four four, we yeah. see that there's th th there's it's either the love of the world or the love mm. of God. It's it cannot go together. That's why the calling is so important to follow. You, right. you, can you read 4.4, four, four? James 4.4? Yeah. Four, four? Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Exactly. Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Yeah, a friendship of this world is, 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 is again, with an enemy of God. You, you, cannot, yeah. you cannot love the world and follow so this calling again this is why this is why we said mm. it's it's a rapture in the sense that we we think about uh, yeah. separation total separation if you follow him if you follow this calling you have to put everything behind and uh, again a verse that looks like that in first john first john uh, the second chapter 15 and 17 do not love that world that this world yeah do not love the world or the things in the world if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Amen. And this is why we're saying this calling of, this calling of, of God on our life, it's a calling of, for separation, for holiness, for everything. And, and we're not talking about uh, hate the world, the trees and the mountains. Right, we're talking right, about right. the spirit of the world. And in, in Western countries, we, we, can, we can sense the spirit, right? Right. Paul talked about in, in one of the epistles, you know, basically, we're, we're not to remove ourselves from all sinners. We'd have to leave the, we'd have to leave the planet, basically. You know, you can't find a place where people are And not Yeshua said, love your enemies. You're right? supposed to be in the midst of it, lights in the midst of it. And he was talking about, hey, we're not going to have fellowship with a believer who's doing all these things and, you know, practicing it. In other words, continuing yeah. it. But it know? just shows you, it highlights the, the radical nature of this calling. Yeah. It's a calling for a complete Holiness again. Holiness in Hebrew, separation, separate, separating yourself f from your past life and from the spirit of this world. In the phone. world, but not of the world. Of the, exactly. Exactly. And now uh, we'll just go a few examples. We we already talked about Abram. Well, we, we talk about different examples of people that had this calling in the new in the excuse me in the Old Testament, and and went after the calling of God for complete complete holiness and if you can read for Genesis from Genesis uh, 6 8 to 14 you don't all have right. to read all the verses but from 8 to 14 we'll get the sense but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord and this is the genealogy of Noah yeah Noah was was a just man perfect in his generations Noah walked with God and Noah begot three sons Shem Ham and Japheth in verse 14 well right before 14 I'll start in 13 mm -hmm. and God said to Noah the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. 
make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. Exactly. So here's again, here's the calling to separate yourself from this corrupt, evil world. Now in, 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 in Noah's place, in, in Noah's case, he had to separate himself physically because yeah. there was no other choice. But the calling is the same. It's a calling for holiness and not to participate in the, in the, in the sins of the world. But Noah had to perform faith mm-hmm. in order to build this gigantic uh, wood structure and hoping, you know, waiting for rain to come, for flood. That would, It was the first flood on earth, right? Yeah, and this wasn't just like overnight construction. This was years and years and According years to rabbinic tradition, it's 100 years. It, it, it took wow. Noah 100 years to build this. And, and can you imagine the faith he had to, um, to, to show for 100 years? The criticism with his, from his neighbors. Exactly. <sighs> so this is a calling. This is why we're saying this calling is not a one-time thing. The, the, it could be a, the calling is God is calling you one time, but you have to follow him day yeah. by day. Yeah, exactly. So, so Noah is one example. We already talked about Abram, but we have Lot. We have Lot, Abram's nephew. You said ma- nephew mm-hmm. yeah. in Genesis 18, 15 and 17. And this is really important. Genesis 19. In 19, sorry. Uh, Genesis 17. 19, 15, 17. And actually before this event, Lot came with Abram. He came out, so he already kind of took that call to come. Yep. But then now he chose... He chose Sodom and Gomorrah. He chose the beautiful land, the fertile <laughs> land, what seemed to be the best. By sight. He went by sight by instead sight. of going by faith. Exactly. Yeah. And so here, here is uh, Sodom and Gomorrah is about to be destroyed. He says, uh, it says, When morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he lingered, the men took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hand of his two daughters, and the Lord being merciful to them. And they brought him out and set him outside the city. So it came to pass when they had brought them outside that he looked and said, he said, escape for your life. Do not look behind you, nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. Don't look back. So here we, here we see again this radical call, not only to go out, but never look back. Go and forward. And look back. <laughs> no, oh, exactly. And look at before you before you remind us who look back. <laughs> can you read Luke? Yeah. Because Yeshua is reminding us. Yeshua himself. So in Luke the seventeenth chapter thirty two thirty three, he said, "Remember Lot's wife. Remember her. Why? Whoever <laughs> seeks to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it." Yeah. So so, so even Yeshua is telling us to remember his Lot's wife. Here's the thing. Uh, there's, if you just read this on the surface, he, wh- whoever seeks to save his life, what is he talking about? Like save your life, like uh, from death. <laughs> well, actually, if she was trying to do that, she would have obeyed the angel. Right. If she was actually really seeking to save her mortal life, she would have obeyed the angel. But she wasn't seeking to save her mortal life. She wanted to save her cultural life. She loved her life in the exactly. city. Exactly. And remember, you know, think of the context of it. Remember, Abraham came through and destroyed those kings who fought against Sodom and Gomorrah and all the spoils and stuff. He said, no, I'm not taking a bit of it. You guys keep it. And and basically, you got to imagine that Lot was probably very wealthy after all that because they probably gave a lot of the spoils to him and were like, oh, you know, you're kind of this holy. In other words, his wife had a lot to lose. They probably lived in luxury. They probably lived, you know, he was he was in the city gate, right? So he had some sort of authority. They were mad at him because, you know, he was kind of asserting his morality upon them. And they, they remember when the yes. evil men, wicked men tried to attack him. Of course. But yeah, she looked back not to save her life, but to save her possession, life, yeah. her life she had before, her life in Sodom, the life, in other words, the the society life, the friends. So again, it shows you how radical is the call of God. Yeah. Only not only yeah. to leave everything and go forward, not looking back, not looking mm. back in in, in, in in you know it's just in she misses every uh, yeah. the, the luxury life she had. Mm. No, no, no. You leave everything. Trust me. Mm-hmm. Go after me day by day. And, I'll, and, and again, we see in Abram, it's not like Abram got something. He had to wait for a city. He had to wait for a better mm-hmm. city than his, than the rest of his life. He, he had to wait for Jerusalem that, to come from heaven. He had to wait for a city that, that, that her builder is, is not man. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, now, now we see the other example is Moses. Um, In Exodus 3, 1. Exodus 3, 1 to 10, yeah. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father, father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Yeah, and you can read verses 9 and 10. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Yes. And of course, Moses is later saying, God, who am I? I'm not fit. I, I can't yeah. even say uh, the, uh, the words right. And then God said, well, just, just follow me. Just do what I say. Yeah. Hear the call and follow the call. I will take care of the rest. Aaron would help you. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry. I'll give you signs and wonders. But you have to. But, but again, Moses is an example of somebody that heard the calling of God and, and went and did it. He did mm-hmm. it. He obeyed yeah. with faith. Yeah. And, and in Hebrews, in the Hebrews, they, you don't have to read, but in Hebrews, it says, it tells us in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, mm. that he had, he had a lot to leave because he was, he was a prince in Egypt. Yeah. It's actually, he, he left twice. Right. First, when he left the comfort of Egypt and being in royalty, the yeah. he was royalty. He was living in the palace. He could have just ignored the cries of his brothers. He could have just ignored mm. the oppression of slavery, but he didn't. And he took, he took action himself and which cost him okay but then the second time you got to think about it he was living living life so good Mm -hmm. he was in the country he had everything he had his wife he had his children he had an easy peaceful his father-in-law was probably rich and and he seemed like a nice Mm -hmm. guy Mm -hmm. so it's like yeah he had everything he needed there so then he went from luxury and prestige leaving that to then he was leaving the comfort and safety serenity of that shepherd life and here's the interesting part wow. in in moses's case it's not only a calling for a calling for moses god is telling him it's a calling for the whole nation mm. you will you will get the whole nation out mm. out of egypt now of course egypt symbolizes the world yeah. to the promised land. So the same route that Abram did, the mm. same route will, is Israel. Israel as a nation has this calling on itself mm. to a complete reverence, a complete separation, a complete holiness from Egypt, the spiritual Egypt, to yeah. the promised land. So, And this calling is still today. Mm. You know, even though we live in Israel, most of the people in Israel are not believing yet in Yeshua. They're still in, in, in exile, in spiritual exile, in spiritual Egypt, and the calling is upon them. And we think about, just even like what we talked about with, with Abraham, he knew how uh, seductive that call would be to come back. So he didn't send his son, he sent his servant to go bring his wife. And we have so many stories as we read through that Exodus uh, story and as the wanderings and so forth of how many times their heart went back. Their heart went back exactly. to Egypt time course. and time again. And every time their heart went back, there was punishment, there was consequences, there was there was pain and suffering that they went through uh, because their heart yearned for Egypt. So, 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 so again, this is why the calling is so radical and you have to mm. go by faith day by day. Yeah. And remember, you just said you have to, you have to take up your cross and your daily. cross yeah. daily yeah. because it's this, this calling. God is calling you once, but it's, it's a daily walk. Mm-hmm. And we have two, two, two other examples of women. So Rahab in Joshua, the second chapter, Rahab, yeah. but it's in Joshua, the second chapter, nine to 13. Okay, so Rahab said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that the terror of you has fallen on us and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. As soon as we heard these things, our heart, hearts melted. Neither, neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. Now, therefore, I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you will show me kindness to my father's house and give me a true token and spare my father, my mother, my brothers, my sister, and all that we have and deliver our lives from death. So Rahab exhibited faith because she had she had a calling. And then what happened in Joshua 6, 25, 
Joshua 6:25, look. And Joshua spared Rahab the harlot, her, her father's household, and all that she had. So she dwells in Israel to this day, because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out. So she left. She heard the calling, and with faith in this, in in the God who called her, she did what Abram did. She left her father, her father, not her father's house, because she left with her family, but she left her culture, mm-hmm. her nation, her people, everything. She left and joined Israel so much so that in, Ma, in, in, in Matthew, the first chapter, in the genealogy of Yeshua, her name appears. There's another person whose name appears that we're going to talk about next. Yeah, and Ruth also, Ruth, in uh, Ruth chapter 1, 16 and 17. So Ruth said to Naomi, Entreat me not to leave you, or turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. Again, this is this root ex- again is exhibiting the, the, the radical nature of this calling. When she hears this calling in her heart, she, she leaves everything by faith, even though Naomi... Naomi tries to convince her, don't, don't come. Yeah. You don't have to do that. Stay here. This is your people, your gods. Why are you doing this? No, because she, she heard the calling of God mm. for complete separation. And, she's, she, and she says, only death will separate us. I'm not, I'm not leaving you. I'm going. I'm going. I'm already packed. Because there's more uncertainty in the way than there was certainty in Ruth's invitation. Naomi, she's an Israelite. She's, mm. you know, the family. But... You know, I'm sure Naomi was even concerned, like, will they even accept her? Will exactly. She's a know? foreigner. Because she knows what the uh, what the Torah says and what the culture says. And like like Rahab, this this separation, this act of separation by Ruth got her in again in hmm. this genealogy of Yeshua. Wow. wow. So, so so it's it's costly. Mm-hmm. But the but the benefits, you know, the spiritual benefits it's amazing. Are, are amazing, yeah. Mm. So we'll see. This is a, th- these were a few examples in the Old Testament. Of course, we have the examples in the New Testament for the same calling right. for separation from this world, the spirit of this world. So we already talked about the two disciples, the uh, Simon, Simon and Andrew, right, mm-hmm. in the boat, and, yeah, and yeah. the other two. But we have Philip in John one forty. Is it forty two forty three? The following day, Yeshua wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. And he followed him, of course. He not only followed him, he called Nathaniel uh, as well. But again, Yeshua is calling him, and he follows him. Mm -hmm. That's the pattern. This is the basic calling of God, of his disciples, of of his followers. Follow me. And it's going to cost. You know, it's going to cost, but it's giving. It's, it's, it's giving everything, right. you know, following Yeshua. But what do you need more, right? Hmm. And Matthew himself, Matthew, the disciple, Matthew, and we can read about Matthew in Luke, the fifth chapter. But where are you reading from? 27 through 28. Okay. Luke 5, 27, 28. After these things, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. So he left all, rose up. And followed him. So Matthew, the tax collector, Matthew from the from the tribe of Levi. Again, he was sitting, doing his own thing, right? Probably a rich, a rich man. Yeah, very rich. And Yeshua called him. And what is it? What, what, what's what was his reaction? He left everything. He left everything and followed him. <laughs> Writing the gospel according he, to Matthew. He didn't give ten days' notice. He didn't give any uh, of that. <laughs> he just took off. Can you imagine Yeshua passing him? He's sitting, doing his business. Mm. Uh, Yeshua is the, f- follow me, and he just goes up and follow him. Can you imagine the the faith mm. yeah. that Yeshua gave him? And even just thinking of the uncertainty that Matthew faced, he was a tax collector. He was like, that was the most hated, like a traitor. That was the most hated, traitorous position you could be in. He was being called to follow a rabbi. Would I even be accepted? Would people even accept me in? Like. Is this, I'm, am I going to follow for a few days and then come back to nothing? You know, because you, you leave your post, you're done. And now, yeah. and now when you open the New Testament, the first book you see? Matthew. The gospel according to this, this tax collector that just followed the calling. We're yeah. talking about the calling of God for complete 
holiness, separation from the, the spirit, the zeitgeist, the spirit mm. of this world into, into God's calling, into <laughs> God's. And uh, another example, the rich young ruler in Mark chapter uh, 10, Mark 10, 21, 22. This is a negative example. Yeah. So then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, one thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me. But he was sad at this word and went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. Yeah. So he didn't, he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Why? Because, Because he, he had great possessions. He had too much to lose. You know, like remember Lot's wife? Yeah. She has too, she had too much to lose. Everything mm. was so comfortable. Everything was to go, to go by faith to the land that I will show you. Yeah. And so the disciples were totally shocked by this whole thing. They, you know, kind of in the culture of that day, someone who is rich also, they just thought, well, God blessed him. He must be holy. You know, he must be blessed by God because he's blessed. He's rich. They said, who, who Lord can be saved? Who then can be saved, Lord? Who can be saved? Well, I guess we got a good example of that in Luke, right? Yeah. So, so he doesn't. Rich, rich, rich people could can be yeah. could, could could follow this calling also, and we There's see an example. Yeah, in Luke, you're reading from Luke the 19th chapter. Yeah, 19 chapter, starting chapter two. Now, behold, uh, verse two. Yeah, yep. behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich, and he sought to see who Yeshua was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Yeshua came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He's gone in to be a guest with a man who's a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Lord, look, I, I give half my goods to the poor, and if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I'll restore fourfold. And Yeshua said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. Exactly. And, and what, what an accord to finish, to finish this mm. podcast just the way we started it, with Abraham, remember? And, and Yeshua, <laughs> it's, it's as if Yeshua is close, closing is the, the circle. We started with Abraham, and he's saying to, 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 to the people, salvation came to, 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 to Zacchaeus, you say? Zacchaeus? Yeah. He followed the calling. Is like it, Because he's also a son of Abraham, the same Abraham that followed the same calling. Now, is he just talking about geneal, ge the genealogy he's a son of Abraham? Or is there something a little deeper that he's a son of because... He likewise is stepping out into that calling. Exactly. So it's not only is physical, physically probably a son of Abram because he's an Israelite, right. but he followed the calling of Abram. The faith of Abram. The faith of Abram. Wow. The, and this, exactly, this is the same calling hmm. of God. Again, it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. The calling, yeah. the calling is the same. To leave everything behind and follow hmm. God. Don't look back. Faith, you know, faith by day by day in faith, And, and the God who promised is also faithful to deliver. Wow, Amen. that's such an encouraging message. Thanks for sharing with us. And Amen. Lord, we just ask that you would help for us to answer that call every day, Lord, that we wake up, that we would remember that we're looking to a city that's yet to come, that we're just dwelling in these tents, these temporary dwellings, waiting for your arrival and a foundation that will be sure When all these things are shaken, when the world shakes, and when kingdoms are overturned, the King of Kings is bringing a foundation that will never be shaken and a city that will last forever. And so we look forward to that. And Yeshua, we say, come soon, come quickly in our day. Amen. Amen.